1991's Popcorn is a horror film that has it all. It's a little film that could. It has a compelling story, a great setting, fantastic genre actors, a producer slash director who helped define the slasher genre. It has dark and unnerving elements. It has plenty of camp. And best of all, it has the story behind the camera. From directors and main actors being let go to the film almost not being made, to egos, to creative differences, and even death. The story behind the camera may almost be as interesting as the final film itself. Now, Popcorn might not be a perfect horror film, but it's a perfect horror film to talk about. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. So I honestly thought I wasn't going to have a lot to say about this film. I mean, it's been on my watch list for years and I rarely hear anyone talk about it. Well, I finally sat down with it and I was blown away. During the first 20 minutes, I was dumbfounded that people don't talk about this film. The beginning was so incredibly fun and well executed. It reminded me of the same energy found in the cult hit, Night of the Demon. I was impressed by the acting and lighting. Story at the beginning was well paced, but then about halfway through the film, it started to lose me. I understand why popcorn is roughly forgotten. It doesn't stick the landing. About halfway through, it switches tones and that new tone doesn't really fit with the first half. But after finding out the drama behind the camera, it's no wonder why the film doesn't feel like a cohesive unit. Before we get into all of that though, let's dive into the plot. We start on a pretty trippy dream. This bearded guy wants to kill this little girl, and then our lead girl Maggie wakes up from the dream. Maggie is played by Jill Shulin. I love Jill as an actress, and I loved her in When a Stranger Calls Back. So good, by the way. And if I ever make a horror film, I want her to be in it. She is great. Anyways, Maggie is a film buff and is writing a script by using her dreams as inspiration. Maggie tells her mother about the dreams and dang, that's Dee Wallace. She was in just about everything, but horror fans will recognize her from The Howling or Cujo. Maggie, who is in university, has a pretty chill film class. One student named Toby comes up with a great idea to run some older horror films that have gimmicks, a la William Castle, for an all-night horror-thon at the local theater. The proceeds that they make would then go into their own student films, and all the classmates agree to help. They clean up the theater and put everything together for a crazy night. While looking through the props, they find an old film reel. They decide what the hey, and they play it on the big screen. It's a strange film of a bearded man talking about how the audience is now possessed. Maggie sees the man from her dreams on the big screen. She gets worried and she passes out. Turns out that the film was made by some avant-garde director known as Lanyard Gates. He was extremely experimental in his filmmaking. When he showed a film that he made to an audience, they were confused and they laughed it off. He was so sick of people laughing at his films that he decided to make the most real film ever, Possessor. It's a short film, but the ending would have been filmed live at the theater of the showing. He would kill his wife and his daughter live on the stage as the audience watched. He locked all moviegoers inside so they had to witness it. A fire caught loose and it burned everyone inside, killing mostly everyone. Lanyard Gates' body was never discovered, and some say that he's still out there. Maggie's mother acts all weird when she hears about it all. Later that night, the mother goes to the movie theater, which is only playing Possessor now. She walks into the theater, and as the movie plays, she talks to Lanyard on the screen. Some creepy noises surround her, and the mood is especially dark and foreboding. <laughs> but who cares about that? Because it's time for an all night horror thon. Scary, scary movies on the silver screen. Aliens, maniacs, tarantulas, and radiacs, and everything in between. Why are you going? I love this part. The song slaps, and I love how everyone is dressed up and just enjoying themselves. 
It's just so fun seeing so many people enjoying crappy horror films. It's a great setting for a slasher film. We get movies within the movies and they are the best part. We get some spoofs of 50s and 60s movies with all unique gimmicks. As the movies play, Maggie's friends are picked off one by one. Who's behind the killings and why is Maggie the focus of them all? About halfway through the film, after almost everything is revealed, the film changes tone and it becomes a lot goofier. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this shift in tone or not. It doesn't flow well, but I do enjoy both sections. I've become Tina, the class bimbo. Popcorn is a great time and a lot of fun. It has great atmosphere, great camp, great actors, great songs, and is overall just a really fun vibe to it but it wasn't all fun behind the cameras. This was a Bob Clark production. You know Bob Clark, the guy who gave us Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, Death Dream, Porkies, A Christmas Story, and Black Christmas. Bob Clark brought in Alan Ormsby to direct because Bob didn't really want to direct another horror film. They had worked together on a few films and Alan was mostly the writer. Alan started filming the movies within a movie first and apparently took a long time to get those finished. They were filming the entire movie in Jamaica, even though they tried to pass it off as California. Needless to say, production was quickly getting behind schedule. The lead actress wasn't cutting it either, so they fired Alan and the actress and brought in Mark Harrier to direct and Jill Shulin to play Maggie. Mark was new to directing, but he had worked with Bob Clark in the past. Bob took Mark under his wing and he helped him get the movie made. Some of the actors claim that Bob Clark did a lot of the directing of the film. Mark refutes that and he claims that he made the movie because he did all of the editing. Mark correlated his situation to Toby Hooper and Steven Spielberg's situation on Poltergeist. Yeah, Toby Hooper directed it, but Steven Spielberg being the veteran that he was at the time, kind of was breathing down Toby's neck. It's a fair comparison. The actors really stand out and there is some serious cult talent here. Tom Villard, the actor who plays Toby, is a notable standout. Here's a bit of a spoiler for the rest of the film. Tom also plays the villain and he plays it with the enthusiasm of a Jim Carrey performance. That makes it all right in here. I'll just let you go. You're sorry. Look at me. Love you. Now, are we finally ready? Can we shoot this thing? He's so animated in the role, and even though he seems so full of life, things weren't that way behind the camera. Tom approached director Mark Harrier a few weeks into production, and he told Mark that he had AIDS. AIDS was a life sentence at the time, and if production companies knew that Tom had AIDS, no one would ever hire him they wouldn't be able to ensure any productions that Tom was in. Mark kept Tom secret, and Tom passed away just three years after filming Popcorn. The cast reflects fondly of their time with Tom, and they all talked very highly of him. Tom really had a wonderful performance, and he owned that role. If popcorn seems like your kind of film, you should really check it out. Synapse has a fantastic Blu-ray release of it. There is a 50 plus minute making of documentary and it's great. You don't get making of documentaries when you watch a film through a streaming service. Another win for physical media. While not a perfect film, the story behind popcorn more than makes up for its shortcomings. The film is a good time and should be a must watch during the Halloween season. There are plenty of laughs, plenty of scares, and plenty of moments that make this film special. Just make sure you have plenty of popcorn ready to go. And that's all I have for tonight. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and take care, everyone.